On both sides of the Atlantic, central banks are tackling the problem of inflation. Rising prices have become a major problem as economies rebound from the depths of the pandemic. Here in Germany, some people have seen their heating bills double in just the past year. And prices are also surging for fuel and food. Three euros and 95 cents for a head of cauliflower. Other produce is also more expensive than a year ago. Food prices have risen by four and a half percent on average in the past year. Something that Berlin greengrocer Mehmet Thomas has noticed. People are hesitant, which is understandable because everyone is suffering financially right now, and we're noticing it here. People are leaving things off their shopping list. Across the way at this sausage stand, Carola Baia has had to raise her prices by up to 30 percent. Many things that she needs have become more expensive. The cooking oil has increased by 30 percent within two months. The tomato paste by 20 percent. Everything has gotten more expensive. Gabi, the woman who runs the stand next to hers, is retired. She earns a little extra by selling hats. She can hardly afford the inflated food prices and has begun going to a food bank. This way, I pay a fraction for my groceries, but otherwise, if I were to buy groceries like before, it would be really hard to afford them. Fuel prices have risen even more sharply. Premium gasoline now costs 41 percent more than a year ago. And the price of heating oil has doubled. The causes include both the pandemic and a new carbon emissions tax. The European Central Bank believes the inflation surge is temporary and due to the effects of the pandemic. It expects inflation will be lower next year. Yeah, with prices and the pandemic, you need a booster, not only for your immune system, but also for your wallet. That's what my colleague Rob Watts has been saying from DW <laughs> Business, Rob. Yeah, I agree with you there. <laughs> the European Central Bank, they're trying to do something about inflation. What are they doing? Well, one of the key ways in which you can tackle inflation if you are a central bank is because you've got control of interest rates is to, to raise them because what that does is it makes it less attractive to borrow money yeah. and more attractive to save money which means people spend less and when people spend less prices don't rise as much because you don't have this uh, demand and supply issue that, that, that leads to um, inflation but the ECB has said that it's not ready to increase uh, interest rates just yet. In they're fact, at zero, right? They're, they're at historic yeah. lows of right. zero, and they're, they're not going any higher than that just yet. Even though inflation is at, you know, over 5% in some areas, the ECB's target is 2%. Mm -hmm. But I, I've spoken to a, an expert about this today, and he insists that the ECB is, is taking this too slowly, because not only is it saying it's not going to increase rates now, it says during 2022 it can't see itself increasing rates at all Amazing. then either, even though it's, is, it is forecasting, uh, you know, inflation of over 3% then, so it's still well above its target. However, it, it isn't doing nothing to tackle inflation. What the ECB has just announced is that it is going to be phasing out its massive uh, pandemic purchasing programme, which is basically an economic stimulus that was worth 1.85 trillion euros, and that should hopefully do something to stop the outrageous spending. Okay, I mean, so I'm wondering then, how does the European Central Bank's approach compare to other central banks? I'm thinking of the Bank of England, the um, Federal Reserve Bank. It's good that you mentioned both of those two, actually, because we've heard from the Bank of England, which is a big deal because they're, you know, they're the custodians of the British pound, which, sure. is, which is influential, and they aren't doing the same as the European Central Bank. They've actually announced that they're going to increase rates right now to 0.2%. 2.5%, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but actually when you consider that they haven't raised interest rates at all for the past three years, you see that that is something that is remarkable and it has surprised investors today. But one of the reasons it's, it's, Mental yeah, change, it's behaving yeah. slightly... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it is a, because we've, we've been living in an era of, of falling rates, so this is, this is a real change. And uh, one of the things that uh, is behind that is that, you know, inflation is worse in the UK than it is in the Eurozone. So you can see why there's more pressure there for them to do that. But then we've also heard from the Federal Reserve in the United States, the central bank there, and they're also, like the ECB, not increasing rates mm -hmm. yet. However, they have said that they expect to do it three times yeah. next year. And the ECB said it doesn't expect to do it at all next right. year. So they're certainly seeming a bit more radical on this. So what does that tell us then about 22, 2022? I mean, people want to know that prices are going to come down. Yeah, well, they probably will eventually. 
But we can't say that there's not going to be more inflation through at least the first few months of 2022 mm. because we've still got people spending more, still got demand rising, people are buying more. Especially for Christmas and yeah, the Yeah, abso absolutely. Right? And, and people are getting out and about more and they want to buy stuff because they've had this pent-up sure. demand over the past couple of years. But the problem is that supply chains can't keep up. Producers can't make the stuff as fast as it's being sold mm -hmm. and that leads to rising prices which leads to inflation and, and that's not going anywhere. So we're not out of the inflation woods yet. Yeah, we have to get through the holiday season and into January. We'll talk again come February. I'm Maybe sure things are pretty. Yeah. All right. Rob, as always, thank you.